Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FKI Quality. Today I would like to speak with you about the X bar R control chart. The X bar R control chart is used when collecting data in subgroups, that is, under nearly the same conditions and in a rather short period of time. In this case, we're going to be collecting five observations every day, which are labeled as X1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the B column on the chart that we're presenting right now. The values that were co collected were respectively 47, 32, 44, 35, and 20. Now, at the end of every day, or at the end of every collection period, we're going to be calculating the average of the five observations, which in this case is 35.6. This is what we call X bar. Also, we will calculate the range or difference between the largest and the smallest value, which in this case is going to be 47 minus 20 or equal to 27. We will repeat this uh, sampling of five observations uh, every day and also the calculations for the next days. We will continue sampling and calculating both average, daily average and daily range for a period of 10 days. After 10 days worth of observations, there is sufficient data to calculate control limits. The first step is to calculate the averages, the average of the daily averages, known as X double bar or grand average, and also the average of the ranges, also known as R bar. And so the X double bar is calculated to be 29.14 and R bar is calculated to be 28.9. Observe that to calculate the limits which define the range of natural variation day to day, we use the intraday variability, which gives us a measure of the stability of the process. The second step is to calculate the control limits for the averages and ranges. The control limits define a zone of unremarkable natural variability above and below the average. Notice the constants used in the formulas. A2, D3, and D4. The constants are scaling factors that produce the appropriate limits in the charts. They vary by the number of observations collected at one point in time, which is what we know as the subgroup size. The calculation, therefore, is done for both the X bar, or average, and for the range, R. Each one of these two is going to have its own chart, and the limits are therefore going to be calculated to be upper control limit for the X bar or for the average to be 45.82 and the lower control limit to be 12.46. For the range, the upper and lower control limits are respectively 61.095 and 0. And now we have the control limits for the averages and the range calculated following this procedure. There is no need to wait to have 20 to 30 observations before calculating the limits. 30 is a number commonly used, but it belongs to another field of statistics concerned with probability models and the central limit theorem. Control charts, however, are based on an empirical approach to data analysis rather than on probability models. You can confidently calculate control limits after collecting 8 or 10 samples. Now we will use the X bar R control chart with the calculated limits to monitor the behavior of the process and identify any signals to action due to special variation. And so we enter the data for days 11, 12, and 13 as shown on the table. Here is our first look at the X bar control chart. We can see how the variable of interest X bar is marked by in blue uh, by a line that it takes on different values in an apparent uh, random fashion. Averages for days 11, 12, and 13 are respectively 38.8, 42.8, and 40.4. There is a visible shift upwards, but not enough to be a signal of a special variation. However, on day 14, one case of a special variation is observed two out of three points are very close to the control limit. On day 15, a second case of a special variation is found, one point that goes outside the limits. When we observe signals such as two out of three observations too close to the limits, as we can see here, 
or one value outside the limits, such as this one, we must investigate and look for the changes that created these abnormal behaviors. This these changes are called special causes of variation. Once these causes are understood, we seek to eliminate them if they are undesirable, or make them part of our work if they are desirable. Here is our first look at the R chart. The R chart, known as chart of range variation, shows whether there was an unusual amount of variation inside the sample. That is, it tells us whether the five values collected at the same time were unusually different from one another. The last four values are recorded to be 27, 28, 16, and 11. That is, that is the difference between the largest and the smallest observation in each one of the samples collected in days 10 through 13. By looking at the chart, we do not see any values going outside of the upper limit, which is about 60. And, there is all, and therefore, there is no indication of excessive variation inside each one of the samples collected daily. However, the last four or five observations show a little bit like a series of relatively small ranges, combined with the, which combined with the increasing trend in the average chart, the x-bar, indicate that most observations are becoming larger. In summary, use the x-bar and r control chart to identify signals of unusual process behavior. When this happens, investigate and take action on the cause. Thank you for your time.